Welcome to my kitchen. This is Cooking Under the Collar. I'm your host, Under the Collar. Well, here we are, week two. Hope you've had a good week at home, maybe with the kiddos or someone else, maybe by yourself. And this week, I would love to make a dessert, but it is still Lent. So instead, we're going to make chicken marsala. Chicken marsala has a number of very nice ingredients. Let's get to them. We've got our chicken here, which we're going to actually uh, trim and pound. We're then gonna dredge it in a mixture of flour with some salt and pepper. Seasonal is one of my favorites for that. We're gonna um, go ahead and, and, and put that in the dredge. Uh, then we've got our chicken stock, our mushrooms, sh a shallot, which we'll talk about a little later. This is garlic, a little thyme, some butter, the, some heavy cream. Uh, you're seeing a theme from last week. We've got our marsala cooking wine. And finally, uh, we're gonna put it over a bed of linguine and I'm gonna actually throw in some asparagus. So let's start off with the chicken. The first thing we're gonna do, I have trimmed these um, breasts of chicken. I put them in a Ziploc bag because I ran out of saran wrap. And we're just gonna kind of pound them down a bit. We wanna get them to about a half an inch. To that, I'm simply gonna add, um, I like seasonal. You can use really any salt kind of mixture or even, you know, just a, a, um, a normal salt. And we're gonna, we're gonna be pretty liberal with this. Again, um, it's probably a tablespoon or two. I've got some black pepper that we're gonna add to that. And you wanna salt this and season it pretty aggressively because this is all gonna be in that breading on the chicken. <clears throat> all right. So we've pounded our chicken and we've got that, I've got that right here, the two breasts. We've got our flour dredge here. This is a pan with about mm, half cup of oil in it, just enough to kind of get you a little bit on the bottom. I've got my water for my pasta, which we're gonna start working on in a minute. But at this point, we wanna make sure that the oil gets nice and hot. We're gonna take our flour and we're gonna actually dredge it and then we're gonna place it in. So when you dredge it, you just have to drag it through, you know, make sure that you get all the nooks and crannies in it. Again, you kind of, you want the oil hot, but not smoking. You don't want to burn it. Um, I feel like that's pretty good. It might sizzle. There's a little sizzle, probably could have been a little hotter there, but that's all right. So this is a shallot and we're going to cut this up uh, just into a nice fine dice while the chicken is, is working there. So here we go. So a shallot is kind of like a cross between an onion and garlic. So there's our shallot, all medium shallot, ready to go. Time for the garlic. I have three um, cloves of garlic we're gonna chop up. There's our garlic, we're gonna mix that in with our shallot there. And we're gonna come over and take a look at the chicken. I've been moving the chicken around and I'm gonna flip it now. You kind of want some color on this thing. You, See how that's got some nice brown? It's exactly what you want. At this point, I'm gonna turn the stove on for my water just to at least get that bad boy boiling. While the chicken's working, it's been going for about, I don't know, six or seven minutes. You can get a temperature thermometer out if you want to check it. I've got one here, it's a digital read one. I, uh, I was reminded as I was turning the stove on that as a kid, when I was maybe three or four, I would go and they had the old gas stoves that had the controls on the front. And so as a little kid, I would go up to the gas stove and I would play with the knobs. I love the clicking sound of the knob. My mom would come in and she would freak out that I was playing with the stove. Well, eventually she figured out that I was just trying to learn and so she got the eggs out and got a pan out and we learned to make eggies as i would call them so that was my first thing that i ever made at the kitchen were eggies and we i loved coming in cracking the eggs learning how to make them and cooking them on the stove it was it was great maybe some of you are going to have some of those times with your own kids uh in these couple of weeks <laughs> uh we're going to just test this and uh it should be 165 which it is, perfect. It's actually maybe a touch over. 
Okay, I'm going to turn this off for a second. I'm going to pull these out. And I kind of like to put them on a little wire rack just to let them drain. Okay, at this point your pan should be, um, have a little oil in it, that's fine. You don't want, you want to take all the excess out. So I put that in my freezer coffee pot. Turn it back on, kind of a medium to medium high. All I do is I just add the whole thing of, of mushrooms. I, they're, ch they're sliced already, they're good to go. Um, and you're gonna let those, you're gonna let those cook down. It's gonna take a while. It might take five minutes, 10 minutes. You could have two pot pans going. A lot of times I'll have two pans going. It gets a little chaotic and I thought for the sake of this, we just do one at a time. So the chicken is resting over here. Um, we're gonna do our mushrooms here. This is going and as we, as we do with pasta, we're gonna make sure that we salt this. And as we've talked about in the past, you wanna salt it to the saltiness of the ocean. I was actually thinking about that, and I was thinking about saltiness because uh, this week I've heard a couple of people, not necessarily people that are in our church, but people in general who have been a little salty, and it got me thinking about saltiness, and the saltiness of Jonah in particular. Of course, you know, Jonah and the whale, the biblical character from the Old Testament, Jonah was so salty when God called him to go to Nineveh. God was going to destroy Nineveh for its wickedness, but Jonah didn't want to go. He gets on the ship, but it's going in the opposite direction, away from Nineveh to Tarsus. And a storm comes, and he gets thrown overboard. It's a long story. It's, it's, it's actually not that long, but you can read it in the Bible. And the whale picks him up for this big fish, and that's the story we all hear about in Sunday school. But that's not the big story, because the whale spits Jonah up onto the shore of Nineveh. And God's like, get going. Like, to tell Nineveh to, to wise up or they're going to get destroyed. And so eventually Jonah does what God wants him to do. And he walks through the town declaring that they need to repent. Well, the king hears. And the king decides to repent. He decides to not just repent for himself, but the whole city. He declares a fast. A fast, he said. Yes, a fast. Kind of like what we're in right now. It's, it's a fast for the sake of the whole city. And so God hears the, 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 the king, he hears the cry of the people and they're fasting, and he changes his mind. And he says, you know what, Jonah, thanks to you and declaring repentance for the city, Thanks to the king for declaring a fast, I'm not going to destroy it. But Jonah, much like overly salty pasta water, is salty. He's so angry. He wanted to see the city destroyed. And he actually says to God, I knew that you would change your mind. I knew that you would have mercy. And he's bitter about God having mercy. And he goes and he pouts. And God causes a little tree to grow up to give him some shade from the sun. But then the next day, God goes and kills the tree. And, and, and Jonah's just complaining the whole time. And, and God, kind of, his answer at the very end of the book, the last little line, when Jonah has complained about the, the fig tree, the little shade that he had that had died after only 24 hours, God, God said, you're worried about a little tree? And you, you're angry at me for being worried about thousands and thousands of people, oh, and also the animals. It's kind of an interesting way to end the story. It, it's kind of God saying, you gotta have a bigger mindset. You gotta have a bigger perspective. Don't get salty. <laughs> Don't get salty for doing what God has asked you to do. Anyway, these are, these are kind of sweating, sweating out their moisture. I normally preach about Nineveh with our school students, with our middle and lower schoolers. And normally my sermon basically is like, hey, we're, we're all kind of Jonah sometimes. We, we all get salty and that's okay. It's okay to get salty about stuff. Because life is hard. And God sometimes calls us to things that are not that much fun. But, but I'm going to tell you today that when you salt your pasta water, you want to be a good salty, like the ocean. 
not a bad salty like Jonah. But if you're salty, that's okay too. I'll forgive you this time. All right, these got a little more ways to go, so we'll see in a second. If you waited long enough, and again, I, I don't know how much time that was, but it was probably upwards of five to 10 minutes. You see how these are nice? They, they kind of lost their moisture. At this point, you're gonna add some butter, and that's a lot of butter probably, but that's okay. You're gonna add the butter, and you're gonna get that kind of going. That was probably three tablespoons, maybe four. Again, you don't have to use that much. You can use less, that's fine with me. I'm gonna add my shallot and my onion. I mean, my shallot and my garlic. And we're just gonna get this going. Mm -mm. Smells great. Okay, it's been a couple minutes and you've got your shallots and your garlic made a nice little, you know, they've kind of reduced, they're cooked a bit more. Now you're gonna take your Marsala wine, about two thirds of a cup, and you're gonna, again, just add that in. Here we go. Take about a half a cup of chicken stock. You're gonna add that in as well to kind of cut the Marsala a little bit. And now you're gonna turn this down to about medium and you're gonna allow this to start reducing. It's gonna to need to reduce for probably 10 to 12 minutes. All right, so we've got two minutes left on the clock for our pasta. The asparagus is in, the marsala is thickening up nicely, and we're gonna try it out just real quick. Just grab a spoon, again, don't, don't burn your mouth. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's kind of got a lot of flavor. It's a good bit salty, not too salty. Uh, but the last thing to add is going to be this heavy cream. And again, from last week, uh, you could add more than this. I'm going to add about a third of a cup to start with and see how that goes. So let's... Our pasta is done. That nice colander is a nice gift from Adventure Buddy Joe. So our marsala is doing nicely. It's kind of reduced. Um, I'll turn that off, try it real quick, and then what we're going to do, great, so we're going to add the chicken back one at a time, and again, you can kind of ramp this up or down as you want to. Um, for me, the chicken, uh, just, just kind of get it on both sides. Again, I like a little more color in the chicken, and you can just take a ladle and kind of spoon it over your chicken. So we're gonna plate this up. If you wanted to let the chicken hang out in there for a while longer, you could. Again, I think it's gonna get a little mushy when you do that, so I try not to. But for me, I'm gonna take some pasta, and then I'm gonna take my asparagus. I'm gonna grab one of these chicken breasts. I put it right on top of my pasta, and then you just kind of take that great sauce and you can just put it, label it right on top. Let's sit down. We're gonna light our candles as we always do. It looks great. Um, here's a picture. And yeah, it's great. I hope it tastes good. I think we should say grace. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for this week and for our new reality in which we are fasting. A different type of fast than maybe we expected. We ask that you would be with us, that you would help us to hear your voice, that we would answer readily your call, and that you would equip us with patience and all the good things that we need to endure this time together. Bless this food now to our use, us to your service, and be mind, help us be mindful of the needs of others. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Okay. Let's try it out. We've got our asparagus. We've got our linguine. We've got our chicken marsala. The chicken should be fairly tender since we pounded it, which is a good thing. Um, you know, again, it's probably... Plenty salty. Uh, I tend not to add too much salt, but uh, when I sit down. Mm -hmm. Very good. 
It's pretty easy to make. It does take, you know, a little bit of time because it has some steps to it. Add a little pepper if you want. That marsala taste comes through nicely. The butter and the heavy cream give it a richness that is delightful. And um, yeah, it's, it's probably good for the whole family. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. And thanks for joining us for this episode of Cooking Under the Collar. Let's stay connected.